Abinit on Windows 7. So you can see that I'm now on Windows 7. Um, to install Abinit, you need to go on internet. So I'm using here Firefox, but you can use any uh, web browser you want, of course. So let's go on Abinit. You can type Abinit on Firefox and then go on the website. So there you can, of course, go on to download and download Abinit. Um, the issue is that for Windows, if you want to install Abinit, what you would need to do is download the source here. So it will give you the source for all platforms. But for Windows, what you will need is to use Sigwin, and Sigwin is a software that allows you to emulate a Linux environment, and you have to then compile Abinit uh, from this environment into an executable that you can then use later on your uh, Windows computer. So this is quite difficult and I will here try to only use um, the easiest way um, for you to um, make Avenid run on uh, a Windows machine. So to do that uh, what I advise you to do is to go onto the forum, which is a very good source of information. You can of course register and log in, and then you can go onto platform specific question. And there, um, Jean-Michel Birken has kindly created a binary for Abinit 7.0.5, and he will probably also do the same for the 7.4 uh, version of Abinit. So. You can download uh, the binary directly from this FTP. So I've already done it, so I, I won't do it again. Um, so I have put it that into my... Um, so in user... Where did I put it? In, probably in, no, not in document. Um, I guess I put it on... Okay. User... Okay, I put it there, yes. So you can see that it's uh, here. I have unzip it. You can use whatever software you want. I have used WinRAR to um, de I mean, unzip it. But you can use uh, whatever software you want. Once you have that, you, you can find that you have those different folders. The binary one contain a lot of executable um, and the main one is of course Abinit. Uh, and what I uh, recommend is of course to first read the readme file and you can see that there is two uh, different ways of running Abinit. You can either use the sequential run uh, or you can use the parallel one if you have multiple core on your machine. But in both ways, you will need um, the command line. So for, for that, go on to the start menu and type cmd, and this will uh, give you this uh, command uh, editor. So I'm used of, I'm a lot more used to the Linux one, so I might do uh, some mistakes. So for example, instead of the traditional ls, you, you have actually this dir, a command that gives you uh, where you are, so um, you have to go where you have downloaded the Abinit uh, package. So in my case, it's in Abinit here. Okay. So in Abinit, uh, okay, this is the package that I have in zip. So you can see, okay, that I have the same uh, folder. So bin, bin etc., libre, and readme are the same folder as those, of course. Okay, so from there I will follow the readme, the readme file. Okay, maybe I can put it a bit smaller like this. Okay, so what it says is to go into share example. So we will do that. CD for change directory, share, and then ex example. Okay. There you can see that you have different files, so Abinit, when Abinit runs, it needs an input file and a file file. So in, in, the, in, this, in this case we will try the t.30 
input file so you can go into it share example so you can see that I have this T um, T30 input file so you can use whatever um, block not or wordpad you want to, to edit it and to see it so I'm using wordpad here so you can see that you have uh, this input file for Abinit and each input variables uh, is given here so if you want to know the meaning of an input variables you can uh, go on internet also on Abinit so let's go on to Abinit yes and you can go on input variables so you have here the list of all input variables um, we are now setting up some levels um, so for beginners probably the most used input variables are those listed here with variable level S so you can see that SL is one of the most used input variables you can click on it and uh, you can see that SL is actually gives you uh, the information about the cell that you the primitive cell uh, on which you want to make the, the calculation so you can go and look for all the input variables you want. Okay, so if we want to make this simulation, you can see that here it's Z nucle is um, the Z of the atom. So in this case, it's 14, which means it's a sil silicon atom. You can see that I have two atoms, the same. So probably silicon. It should be uh, in the um, probably in the FCC structure. Okay, so we, we can try to run this calculation, but Abinit needs something else. It needs a file file, so in this case it's ab.file. Uh, and this file, um, it's this file, um, file, what it contains, it contains um, so it contain a, a different set of lines. The first one is always the name of the input file, so the input file is the one we just saw. So t13.in then the second line is the name of the output file you want to have so you can define whatever name you want then those two um, are for if you want to make first an abinit run and then read uh, the output from the first calculation into the new one so you can put the name like that and this line is for temporary file and the last one is for the pseudo potential files so we are simulating, uh, so we are making an ab initial calculation trying to simulate uh, bulk silicium. So we need a silicium uh, pseudo potential, and the, this pseudo potential is uh, so the first one silicium pseudo potential non conserving. Okay, so if you have different kind of atoms, you need to put different uh, pseudo potential for each kind of atom you are trying to simulate. So let's run the calculation. Okay. So to do that, you can see that the executable for Arbinit is uh, two level higher. So dot dot slash backslash dot dot, and then bin because the executable Arbinit is in the bin folder, and then Arbinit, and then you redirect. So this um, greater than mean that you will give all the information from the ab file to Abinet. Okay, so I'm running it and you can see that there are a lot of information, so it runs smoothly and it delivers 8 warning. Okay, so all the information you just saw uh, printing, all those information, is actually what is contained in the log, what we call the log file. So you can redo the exact same calculation uh, and also I can show you that now we have a lot more file in the folder we have a density file an output file so this is the output file I can open it and you can see that there are a lot of information at the end it tells you that there are eight warnings but in the output file you only have the important information but the warning are not printed here so if you want to see what are the warning you need to uh, open the log file but for the moment the log file was all of this information so if you want to redirect this information into uh, an actual file you can redo the exact same calculation uh, but this time you redirect so by putting the greater than sign you redirect the information on a file that I will call log so I redo the calculation so the calculation run a second time so it's the same calculation but this time I have this log file 
that will contain everything we saw. So you can open it with WordPad, for example, and you can see that now it uh, output everything into this file. Okay, and we can then look, for example, for the warning that I was talking about. So you can put, you can say, you can, for example, do Control F for find, and then warning. You can look for warning. Okay. So the first warning is this one. Okay, I can look. So it says something, you have to read it and some and you can then decide if the warning is important or not. You can go to the following warning. Uh, yes, this one, okay. So you can read all the eight warnings and take um, the action that are needed. Okay, you can also see that it has created a new output file because Abinit does not uh, erase the previous output file but it will create a new one and putting this A, B, C, etc. If you, if you run a second time, a third time, it will always create a new uh, output file and it will not erase uh, the first one. Okay, now I think that's it for running Abinit in sequential version. Now we would like to do the same but in parallel to take advantage of the multi-core ar architecture that we might have. For example, on my computer here, I have uh, it's an Intel uh, i7, so I have four core, physical core, and eight threads, which means that I can run up to eight uh, calculation in I mean in parallel. So to do that, uh, I suggest you to go back to the README file and then to look at this. Um, parallel version, so you can also do in, in sequential um, this second example, but I won't do it because it's quite long. It's the reason is to show that it's better in parallel, so it's of course long. But you need before you can run it, you need to install uh, mpitch, which I mean MPI, so that you can run MPI. So to do that, we will cd back. So cd dot dot um, means that you go one folder uh, above, and then we want to bin smpd and dash install. Okay. So actually, I have already done it. So now, okay, I think it stopped it, and then now it's installed. Just to check it. Yes, okay. So, mpitch is now installed, um, and now I can run uh, in parallel. So, to do that, let's go back into this share uh, example folder. Okay, and in this folder, I will launch um, MPI. So MPI is the, the software that allows you to run um, Abinit with multiple core. It's called MPI for message passing interface. Um, so it's also one of the executable that is in the bin folder. So it's called MPI exec. Okay, then local only two. Local only two mean that you want to use two core. Um, to run the calculation. I can also use, for example, 4, it will go even faster. And then you need to launch the executable, so in this, in this case, abinit, so in bin abinit. Then I will give, okay, so this is the other um, example file, but this one is a bit longer run. So that we can really see that it, it can, we can take advantage of parallelization. So I can redirect the output also in log, but this time I will call it uh, maybe log 2. Okay. So while it's running, it's also good. You can control add sub, which allows you to open this uh, task manager. Um, and in this task manager, you can see that um, the core are suddenly running. So normally only four of them should be used. Um, seems like there is more. Um, okay, maybe 
the thread is also taking into account because I have four core. So maybe when I put um, local only four, it means that I'm really using four core, so eight threads. So I'm using the maximum power of my computer available. Okay, so you can see that I'm using half of the computer here and a bit of memory. Okay, of course I have other application running and especially uh, the recording application. So this might not be uh, completely accurate. So we have to wait for a little bit in order to see the calculation finishing. So it's still computing. And you can also see, okay, you can see that it's creating some files. So log2 is the main log file for this calculation, but you can also see that there are those additional three log, which corresponds to the log of the three other core. So this log is concerned the, the second core, this is third core and the fourth core and it will it contain information that are relevant for those core. Okay, so you can see that the calculation end and I have now this log2 file which is probably much bigger. Yes. Okay. So yeah, you can see it's much bigger. Okay, so you can test it and you can test in sequential and in, in parallel and you can see um, that the parallel version is much faster. So Abinit does not scale completely linearly, but for a, let's say a, a reduced number of core, it scales almost linearly. And it's uh, only when you go to very very high number of core that you can see that the linearity drops a little bit. So with that, um, I thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. Bye!